you so much. <laughs> Mr Speaker. Uh, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you to the myth-busting minister who can also lead the choir and sing along for that contribution. Mr Speaker, if that is a government that is brimming with ideas, not tired and full of energy, Mr Speaker, then we are in trouble. That is exactly what this government is. It's tired, it's out of ideas, and it has no fresh approaches. Mr Speaker, on this side of the House, we are brimming with ideas. We've got fresh approaches, and we are ready to lead this country with an eye to the future and not looking backwards which is what our current government is doing. And no more did we see that than in the budget that was delivered last week. It was a budget that completely failed to fill the gaps and the deficits that National have created after nine years in government. It was a government that was an it was a budget that was an irresponsible, an irresponsible election bribe that has exposed it for exactly what it is, some a government that has run out of ideas. Mr Speaker, we cannot afford the election bribe that National has put on the table. Not if we want to address the deficits that exist in our country. Not if we are unprepared to put up with the state of many of our social services in this country, Mr Speaker. It is not something that we can afford. My, da my colleague Damien O'Connor put this very simply when he said, this is a budget that increases inequality. And that is exactly what it does, Mr Speaker. The, the, the government on the other side have tried to assuage themselves that it does the opposite. But, Mr Speaker, this is not the case. This is a budget that means that families in my electorate in Wigram and families all over this country are having to dig deeper into their pockets when they want to take their family to the doctor. It means they're having to dig deeper when the school stationary bills come home. It means that, that when their children need specialist mental health services, more, that a huge number of them are not getting seen within the three-week period. Mr Speaker, this is a budget that leads a huge deficit for us, for a country. <coughs> what National tries to say is that, this is that their tax package is going to help these families. But let's pick this, but unpick this, because this budget is unravelling, Mr Speaker. If you look at how it is that that support is being delivered to families, it's through raising the accommodation supplement. We've said fine, we'll do it. It's short-termism, it's not addressing the problems that exist in terms of the housing crisis in the city, but given this government has failed to address the housing crisis for nine long years, Yes, it is something we will adopt in the, short term, in the short term. It is not in any way a structural addressing of the housing crisis. We've also said in terms of the increase in working for families, we've always been a fan of working for families. We've never called it communism by stealth, unlike the government's um, history with this program, that this is a targeted way to deliver money to those in need. And we've said we'll accept something similar like that. But let's not kid ourselves about the tax cuts. I get somewhere between $20 and $30 a week more in my pocket. The person who cleans my office gets, on the minimum wage, gets a dollar a week more. How is this fair? How is this addressing inequality in this country? Because that person who is only getting a dollar war, war a week is also going to have to pay more to go to the doctor. That person is also going to have to pay more potentially for their, their children's school stationary bill. This is not what we, our vision for New Zealand is. This is not the kind of New Zealand that we want to see. Mr Speaker, it is cynical electioneering that does nothing to address the shortfalls in health. So let's have a look at health. What, what at least 1.7, I think it was some time ago we came up with the figure, um, the Honourable Annette King got cow about two years ago, the Honourable Annette King had that $1.7 billion figure calculated by Infometrics. That number will have grown, Mr Speaker. Did this budget 
seek to address that shortfall in funding. No, it did not, Mr Speaker. Let's have a look. The mental health funding that we saw in question time today that was um, touted as if this was the largest of the government that was doing, to, that was doing so well. One, it is too little, too late what the government of do is doing. The money that they have now put into it is not going to address the size of the problem we have. It's been fudged together in the last weeks in response to government pressure. We have the Minister of Finance who was answering questions on behalf of the Prime Minister who couldn't answer the very simple question about what is even going to be covered off with that contingency funding. The Minister had no idea this is the man that stood up and delivered the budget and said he had the answers. He had no idea because his government has no plan and it's short-term political opportunism, which means they've thrown that package together prior to the budget. Of the government's $50 million announcement for mental health services, let's not kid ourselves. $25 million of this is coming from the DHBs themselves. This Half of that expenditure is the government saying to DHBs, don't spend more money on hip operations. Don't spend more mo money on knee operations. Don't spend more money on what people are on waiting lists waiting to achieve. You were going to put it inside the mental health ring fence. Mr Speaker, I have seen this happen in Canterbury, where I come from, that we have a government that has woefully neglected the needs and the mental health and the health needs of a, of, a, of a group of people that have been through a natural disaster for six long years. In Canterbury, our DHB is having to use the money that it would otherwise use for hip and knee replacements to fund mental health services, which cannot cope. Mr Speaker, this is the vision that the government now has for the whole country. So I can tell you that if you need your hip replacing, if you need your knee replacing, then your DHB is going to have to push you further down the list because the government has decided it won't do anything to address the, the mental health crisis. What it will do is give themselves and me a $20 to $30 a week tax increase. Now, Mr Speaker, I, I think most New Zealanders that I speak to think that their money would be better put. I want to know when an eight-year-old expresses suicidal tendencies, they can be seen sooner than 12 weeks. Mr Speaker, I have principals in my Wigram electorate telling me constantly that this is the kind of time frame that we're looking at, and it simply is not acceptable. It certainly is not something that I want a $20 pay uh, I want a $20 tax cut in preference to. I want to know that we have a functioning mental health system. And then let's look at education. So they've given schools an extra $140 million in operational funding over four years so they can keep the lights on. Excellent. Pay their bills and make up for last year's funding freeze. But the budget does not provide schools with the funding they need. Only 60.5 million of new funding will be for schools' operational grants. And any electorate MP that goes around and visits their local schools will have heard time and time again the stories of the pressure that the operations grant is being put on. The fact that schools, um, are not only is there, they've had a freeze on their operations grants, but if they want in to pay for the teacher aids that they need for their kids, they're also having to dip into their operations grant. And it's this freeze on operations grants that mean parents having to shell out up to $200 for the, for the school stationery bill, having to pay for the whiteboard money markers and the photocopy paper and the tissues for the classroom because the schools simply don't have the operational money to put behind them. This is this government's vision for this country. It is tired, it is out of ideas, it is short-termism with no eye to the future. It is not a government that thinks, how do we address the big issues of our day like climate change? How is it that we have functioning social services in our country, a functioning health system, an education system that's going to set us up for the future and make sure we are ready for the 21st century, in a country where we don't think it's acceptable that someone has to raise their child in a car? Because this is this government's vision for the future. 20 bucks a week for someone who earns as much as they do 
in this House versus having a country that can address those issues that we simply must get to terms with. This is not a budget we will vote for. This is not a budget that serves the people of New Zealand well. It is a budget that is short term and something that has absolutely no vision. Speaker. The Honourable Nathan Guy. Thank you, Mr Speaker.